So today we are going to work on creating a chord melody arrangement, or rather original. And we have to specify something first. A song typically has words and lyrics. A tune typically is going to be more of an instrumental. So we're not actually writing a song today, we're writing a tune. And the main reason I'm specifying this is because my music theory teacher back in college would have my head if I didn't, uh, didn't make this very, very particular specification. But anyways, today we're going to be learning how to write a tune, or at least the way that I tend to write instrumentals that I, you know, play. And there's two main mindsets to it, and the two different mindsets are based off of the two words that go in the term chord melody. So let's first break that down a little bit. Now, past live lessons, we've talked about the elements of, of um, melody, harmony, and rhythm, and how these are combined to create songs and things that we enjoy listening to. And a chord melody is no different than that. In fact, the word chord in chord melody is really just depicting a type of harmony. In this case, that harmony is chords. And the reason for that is because the ukulele is really good at playing chords. So it's the most common form of harmony that we use on the ukulele. So we can think of the word chord melody as almost like harmony melody, which just means we're playing the harmony and the melody at the same time, or we're playing the chords and the melody at the same time. The rhythm kind of works its way in there with whatever picking pattern, strum pattern, whatever else we use. So with this in mind, let's talk about the two different ways that you can go approaching creating your own chord melody. The first one, which I think is easier to do, and most of my beginning, my first originals were created with, is starting with the chords. Chords can give you this sort of backdrop to what you're playing. And you can think of this almost like a film. So think about your favorite movie. Your favorite movie might be my favorite movie, which is like Star Wars. And is Star Wars, you know, when you go see it in theaters, you're not exactly going to watch it for the incredible character development, even though there is great character development in Star Wars. I digress. You're really going for the, the spectacle of it, right? It's, uh, it's amazing backdrops. It's phenomenal CGI, whatever else, practical effects in the original trilogy. It is all about, whoa, look at this world I'm being immersed in. You can think of that world building, that backdrop, as chords when you're creating a chord melody. If you create a really rich chord progression and you really like how that sounds, your melody, you can think of as more your characters. So if you have a beautiful backdrop, your characters can sometimes become a little bit less important just because you're making it more about that backdrop. So if you write a song based on the chords, your melody can kind of come secondary to it for that reason. Just like a summer blockbuster, it's gonna be more about that backdrop. So let's go ahead and try a little example of this, right? Well, to start, we need to know a little bit about music theory. And we've talked about this before. We've talked about how to create what's called the chord scale using like the Nashville number system and things. If you haven't seen that video before, check it down in the link down below. But let's stick to the key of C major, just to make it nice and easy. And the chords that we have at our disposal in C major are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and back to Z. Now, for now, I'm just going to use these chords because it gives me a nice area to sort of play in, right? And I can just start playing them in whatever order I want. So maybe I'll start with the C chord. And then maybe I'll go to the E minor. And then maybe the F. Maybe the D minor, G. Okay, this is a great chord progression, right? This sounds fine. C, E minor, F, D minor, G. And something I'm doing to make this a little bit more interesting is I'm giving kind of the full beats to the C, the E minor, the F, and I'm doing like half of the beats. One, two, two, on the, the D minor and G, just to make it a little bit interesting, right? So if I strum this and stuff, well, that's great. It just sounds like a chord progression, right? But now I'm going to use these chords and play in this sort of area and try to create some sort of melody within that. So we have our backdrop. Now I'm gonna figure out what characters do I wanna play with in here. So here we go, I'm gonna play my C and then my next chord was E minor. Now, what's the melody note of this C chord? Well, it's going to be whatever the note is that's highest, the one that our ear picks up the most. In this case, it's the C note. So I'm gonna play around with that C note. 
and then it goes to the E minor, and now the melody is this B note, right? And it goes to the F, that A note, and then the D minor, A note again, and then the G chord has that B note. So if you just listen to this, This is kind of boring, <laughs> but it's something, right? We're getting somewhere. Now, what am I doing? I'm just playing the note with some different rhythms and things. I'm playing it at different intervals of time and holding it, giving it space, doing all sorts of different things to it to make it a little bit more interesting. But if I just play the same note over and over, it's not much of a song. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it really simple and I'm going to play just notes of the C major scale on the A string. I'm gonna play this C note here. I'm going to play this B note here, I'm going to play this A note here. I'm also going to play this D note right here. And those are the only notes I'm going to use for my whole melody. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that when I switch to the next chord, the melody note that I play is whatever that note is in the chord. I'm going to set it up. And the way that you set it up is you try to play in towards it. For instance, when I play the C chord, I'm going to think, what is my next melody note? Well, when I go to the E minor, it's that B. So I want to create some sort of tension into that B note. The best way to do that is play a note below or above it just before I play it. That might sound something like this. See how nice that was. What I did is I played the C chord with the C melody note, and then I kind of played around with those, these notes. But then I set up that B, B note with the E minor chord. And then I go to the next chord. Now, I'm going kind of quick through this, right? No doubt, but you can hear how I'm just kind of tinkering around. I'm messing around in this sort of space and you can hear, we kind of have a song right now. Now, I truly just made this up. I didn't prepare this before the lesson. Tried very hard to make sure I didn't prepare a song before the lesson because I want to show you sort of the process of creating this. And it's experimentation that's really important to be able to create these sort of sounds. It might be discouraging watching me do this right now because I'm creating you know, relatively good sounds right away. But don't be fooled. It's from many, many years and many, many hours of making mistakes and playing things that sound bad and learning from those instances to move forward. The trick to writing a good melody is the same trick to creating a good solo. And the way that you do that is make sounds that sound good <laughs> remember them and use them again later. <clears throat> Excuse me, the only way that you get to that point is making sounds that sound bad <laughs> along the way. When I was uh, in college, I took this jazz course and I was learning how to solo. And uh, the teacher said, oh, take a solo. I'm like, I have no idea what to do, right? None. And he said, oh, okay, well, play your C Dorian scale. So I go home and I'd sit there and play my C Dorian scale over and over and over. Um, and then I'd start soloing and practice and be like, this doesn't sound good. I don't know enough. Go back to class. He'd say, take a solo. I'm like, I can't. The C Dorian scale wasn't enough. Give me something else. He'd say, oh, play the thirds and the sevenths of the chords. Or he'd say, you know, play more leading tones, what, whatever. And I go home and I practice and I'd do all these techniques and all these things. And everything still just sounded terrible, no matter what I did. And then one day in the class, literally multiple days of this later, the teacher was like, just go play, man. Like, stop worrying about all of the different things. And just go play, make mistakes, and keep playing through them. Eventually, it'll sound good. And I was so mad. I was so mad because I was like, there's no way that's all that it takes. Well, sure enough, I went home, and the first 20 minutes of practice was garbage. It just sounded awful. But there's that one little thing I did that sounded okay. And so I did that thing a little bit more. I expanded on that thing. And after a couple of weeks of practice, I realized, oh, I've, I've got a couple little things at my disposal, a few things that I think sound good. And when I went back and soloed that, uh, that class, I did those simple little things that sounded pretty good and it worked. And that was really cool. I was trying to do too much. I was trying to do too advanced of a solo, too many crazy things. When all that I needed to do was to focus on making one thing sound good. And that's the goal when you're first working on this chord melody stuff is just make one little thing that sounds good. 
Maybe it's not playing five chords like what we just were here. Maybe it's just playing two. Maybe it's just between a C chord and a G chord. And maybe it's just using this three, two, zero, and five. You know, might create a sound like this. wasn't so bad for only having four notes and two chords. It's a product of sort of practice, trial, and error, and kind of going through that. The really cool thing about creating chord melodies through chords is you already have a head start of what your melody should be. Whenever you play a chord, there's going to be a melody note associated to it, right? Because there's going to be a highest note, the note on your A string. And a lot of ukulele chord melodies are going to be using those as sort of your melody notes to go. Now, uh, P. Cash makes an incredibly good point, which is I think the pauses between notes make it sound good too. Absolutely. And when I was learning how to solo, that was the single most important piece of advice I ever got, which is the notes that you don't play are just as important as the notes you do play. Take space in your playing. It's just like talking. If somebody starts talking and they keep ta talking over and over and they don't take any breaks at all to make a point or whatever else, it doesn't really drive any point home because you just hear this noise and sound. It doesn't work when somebody does that. To make a point, you got to stop to make that point. It's the same with soloing. And it's the same with creating a melody. It's all the same stuff. A lot of times I like to do a lot of things really fast and whatever else and then just kind of stop for a moment just to make that point. And then we can move on, right? Same sort of deal. But again, the melody notes kind of are already built into the chords. So what's fun about this is if you start learning alternate ways to play the chords, you can already start to hear different melodies and create different sounds. So if we take that, that chord progression I was just doing, which is C, E minor, F, D minor, and G, right? What if I move these chords to different places? Well, that can create all sorts of opportunities. Maybe I play my C chord still here. But then when I go to the E minor, maybe I go to 0777. And then when I go to the F chord, maybe I go to 5558. When I go to the D minor, maybe I do 7555. And when I do the D, G, excuse me, maybe I do 0775. Right? Now all of a sudden... Right now, that's that's a lot of information. If you don't know those chords, this might be very overwhelming to watch. The importance here is not to learn every single thing I'm playing right now, but rather keep the ideas in mind, right? This is designed for kind of all levels. So if you're more of a beginner trying to do this, don't worry about doing five different chords all up and down the neck. Just work on one or two. If you're a more advanced player looking to do this, go ahead and bite off those five chords and give it a go. See how it can work. Most of the songs I've written have been a product of playing around with chords. Because when you find different chords in different areas, melodies can start to kind of come to you in different ways, and it sounds really good. So pull open a chord book, find a bunch of different versions of chords, try messing around with it, get comfortable with the key that you're in so that you know what the notes are, and try it. And know that your first song is going to suck, just like mine did. <laughs> it's normal. I'd, I've never met somebody whose first song was great. It just doesn't happen. And that's fine, because your second song will suck a lot less. And eventually, you'll make songs that won't suck at all. And that's what's cool about this. Don't be afraid of the failure that comes with songwriting. Most people don't end up writing music because they're too afraid to fail at making it. It's the same reason why people don't become painters or sculptors or anything else like that is because they want to succeed right away and nobody does and that's okay. So, so that's the first way of creating a chord melody is you start with the chord and you create melodies from that and it works really well. So using that, that little vibe I was playing here, let's, um, here's my chord melody using chords first. So we got C. E minor, D minor, F, G. I'm gonna play my two melodies for him. Totally making this up on the spot. Here we go, so. That's my part one, and then my second part.
Something like that. Pretty cool, right? Boom, we got a song instantly. Pretty, pretty sweet. Let's talk about the second method, which is, I think, the more advanced method and more common method for most people, um, the more pure method. And what that is, is writing the melody first, right? So when you, when you have a melody first, your chords are there to create texture. So let's go back to that movie analogy for just a moment. We talked about Star Wars as like these massive, awesome set drop, you know, backdrops. And then the characters are kind of almost secondary to those set drops, even though I would never ever say that Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, or Han Solo are secondary to anything. You get what I'm sort of saying. Now, not all movies are that way. Lots of movies, it doesn't really care what's back there. The movie could take place in a room that's colorless and it doesn't matter because what's interesting about that movie are the characters. The characters, the development, the dialogue, that's what we really watch it for. And the song equivalent to that is melody. Some songs are such beautiful melodies that they almost don't even need harmony to sound really good and to be captivating. Now, a movie that takes place in a literal white room with characters probably won't be very good, even if those characters are amazing. You want to focus on the characters, right? That's that's the priority of, in this particular case, but you got to have something in the background. And that's how we can write our melody and then choose our chords sort of accordingly. Accordingly, pun. So let's go ahead and make a melody real quick. Let's st still stick to the key of, of C major and let's write a, an incredibly basic melody to show how this concept can really work. So here's my, my super, super basic melody. My melody is going to still use those same four, four notes, the C, B, A, and D notes. And here's what my melody is going to be. It's going to be a C, B, A, B, C. Okay, I'm going to start with just that. And then it's going to go B, 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 A, C, B, B. Okay, so it goes... Something like that, right? I know that's a little different than what I said, but the gist is still there. We got the C note doing some things, and then we got this B note doing some things. They'll say, I really like the sound. Okay, so now what I do is I think, okay, I want to add some chords to it. I want to add some harmony. What I'm going to do is create a backdrop for these characters. So now let's think, are these characters in a situation that's really happy? Like, you know, they're playing in fields of flowers and stuff. Okay, I'm going to pick major chords then to do this. So maybe I'll play a C chord. And then maybe I'm going to pick a G chord. You hear how happy this is. I mean, it's kind of a sad melody, but you hear how it's a happy situation the melody is in. So it's like sad characters in a happy, happy setting, right? Well, what if it's not so happy? What if we want this to be more sad? Well, maybe instead I'll use minor chords. Now, how do I know what minor chords to use? Well, the best way to do it is to look at the notes that you're playing and identify what chords have those notes. So if my first melody note is focusing on this C, in the key of C major, I've got my C chord. I've also got my F chord. And I've got my A minor chord as options because all three of those chords contain a C note in them. If I want it to sound sadder, what if I do A minor instead? So that sounds like this. And then when it goes to the B note, I've got my G chord, because the B note's in there, but I also have my B diminished, which is a little too tense here, and my E minor. E minor is a nice sad sound, it's a minor chord, right? So now we have that sort of... So if I play this melody with these minor chords, woof, that's quite a bit different, isn't it? It's the same characters, but with very diff different backdrops behind them, which creates a very different sound and texture. Now, what if I just combine these? Well, Pretty cool, right? You can hear how this can take the same melody line repeated and now I can create a variation through just the harmony. 
there's a term for this in music theory. It's called themes and variations, where you play something and you create a variation on it. And my favorite and the easiest way to create that variation is just change the harmony. Different harmony means you can create completely different sounds. And it's really amazing how much you can make something sound different based on those chords. Now, right now we're doing everything diatonic, which means in key. We're in the key of C major, so C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished are simple chords that we're using for this exercise. You're not limited to those at all. You can use all sorts of rich music theory concepts. In fact, we talked about how to know what chords to use in our last live lesson, which is linked down below. And that can give you some other ideas, you know, using things like secondary function. So one of my favorite things is playing like an E7 chord before an A minor. And maybe I put that where my B note was. So now it goes something like C, then the G. Now maybe I play that melody again, but now with an E7. And then to go to the A minor. Kind of cool to introduce these different concepts. And remember, at the end of the day, it's about making mistakes and learning from them so that you can pursue something new. Now, everything I just played here, it's all yours. Feel free to take that melody, make it your own, and it's all yours. <laughs> That's the cool thing about doing this is being a great melody writer is really about being a great thief. It's finding these other melodies that other artists do, and if you can reformat them and repurpose them, you're not breaking any laws, so it's pretty, pretty awesome. And so that is creating these sort of chord melodies in a nutshell. We talked about harmony and melody and how that's chord melody, and that's that term. And we talked about how you can start with the chords, and that can give you an idea of where to work off some melody lines. We've also talked about how to start with melody lines and how you can choose chords accordingly to create different soundscapes for them. Think of it like a movie. Sometimes people create the backdrop and the setting first and then in create the characters. Other times people create the characters and then make the backdrop. In this analogy, the melody is our characters. The backdrop is our harmony. Some songs prioritize one over the other. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just like there's no right or wrong way to create a movie with that. Uh, you can enjoy things that you enjoy and that's totally fine. So I'm gonna put it to any questions you guys might have uh, with this concept. Uh, it looked like there are a few messages in the chat, so I'm gonna start looking through those. Um, Christopher says, good morning, good morning. Uh, Pikash says, hello from Chicago. Hello from Seattle here. Uh, Pikash also said, the pauses between notes make it sound good too, which is absolutely correct. Um, Pikash also said, let's put some words to it and copyright it. Yeah, so you actually don't need words to something to be able to copyright it, just as a heads up. The melody notes itself are enough. In fact, this recording here on YouTube is enough uh, for me to claim copyright to any melody that I did there. Um, but uh, we're not going to go into copyright law right now, <laughs> but I, I digress. Um, so any questions that anyone have, uh, I'm going to look on the uh, Rock Class 101 forums. So every time there's a new one of these lessons, uh, Drew makes a post about it. Um, and typically people will leave a comment or two. But if you ever are watching this as a recording and you wanted your question to be answered, but you can't make the, the lesson, you can leave it in the forum and we'll be sure to answer it. Um, it just says, great lesson topic. Thank you. I want to know all the things. I'll be there for sure. Cool. Um, so that's... Uh, a nice comment, but all right. Well, it doesn't look like there are any more comments, uh, so I guess we'll, we'll leave it off here in just a moment. But again, just to recap, creating a chord melody is about creating these different types of sounds using chords and melody, as basic as that sounds. And you can start with either piece. I like to start with chords because it's easier to find melody notes within those chords. But you can also start with the melody and you can figure out what chords you want to use to create texture and flavor on the melody as you go through. Uh, Pcash said, I was trying to figure out chords to go with melody notes. I figured out for Margaritaville, but couldn't figure out good uh, chords to play. Could you show a couple? Um, yeah, so with, with the song Margaritaville, it depends on what key you're playing in. So um, if you're figuring out a song by, uh, by the sound, let me see if I can find the uh, Margaritaville song. Um, if you're figuring out the song based on ear, 
you want to see if you can find those sort of chords because that's going to make a big big difference and so if i were to look at margaritaville here if it'll work and i can't i'm not sure which uh key you're in but the best way to do this is to identify the key that you're in and then what chords exist in that key and then when you find a melody note you play that melody note let's say that melody melody notes an a and let's say you're in the key of c major well odds are good the melody note is going to be found within the chord during that time so what notes work with a well a minor d minor and f and usually you can find the chord from that and it's kind of cool because once that sort of unlocks you can see how harmony is sort of decided and chosen and it's amazing how much you can change something just based on the harmony in fact one of my favorite examples of this is uh, taking like hot cross buns which normally sounds like this right it goes That's just going between a C and a G7. You can hear that sort of sound. But what if I made it minor? Well, that might sound like this. That was very different, wasn't it? Exact same melody, nothing was different there. But instead of playing C and G7, I was playing A minor and E7. That's a very A minor sound, very strong A minor sound. But the melody notes were E, D, C, E, D, C. And the E note is in the C chord, but it's also in the A minor chord. The D note is in the G7 chord, but it's also in the E7 chord. And the C note is in the C chord, but it's also in the A minor 7 chord. So you can flip flop back and forth and it creates a totally different sound. And that's one of the ways that songwriters create what we call themes and variations for that sort of reason. So, well, I hope you've gotten something out of this. Um, you know, if, if you're ever looking at trying to do more with chord melody and that sort of style, we've got a few different things that you can check it down, it down the links below. Pcash said, what if the melody knows on the C string is a quick note? Um, yeah, we generally strum up into it. And the bigger deal is we try to avoid putting our melody notes on the C string when we can. Sometimes we have to, in which case we can kind of strum up or we can go more of a finger picking pattern or whatever else. But generally speaking, the keys we choose are based on the melody notes being on the higher strings for that particular reason, because we want to have the melody up top with the harmony underneath. So, but I digress. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below if you're watching this as a recording. We try to look through those to make sure if anybody has any questions that they are answered. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time uh, for the next live lesson. We do it the second Saturday of every month. And I uh, hope you got something out of this. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much. For